Well, does anyone want to suggest a topic for discussion today? Maybe Echo. Echo usually has something on her list. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stay away from the real big one, but um, so you know the time that I spent up in Salt Lake and uh, how they kept the words like are, how, how do I say it, the word exploit. And I was a little bit um, not so fond of them insisting that everybody exploits and exploits and exploits. And the other day I was doing a session with somebody remotely and I was sitting on a, on a rock in Phoenix <laughs> and um, it's where they do all the Native American ceremonies there. So it's like very consecrated. It's like a prayed in rock. I didn't know this for years, but it's where I was always drawn to. So I would go and sit there for hours and I was sitting there and I left the mountain the other day, the rock. And it came up that when we're not serving, when we're not so connected to that Krishna consciousness, when we're not in that state of being, that we're literally serving another or self. So in actuality, we are exploiting <laughs> every, everything. <laughs> Like it's almost like a constant life of exploitation because it's a matter of our means or what I want or what I think or what, you know what I'm saying? Versus being so in that state of Krishna consciousness that that life guides, directs, and is living th th through, am I allowed to say that? Living through us, living you know, uh, as us tapped in so much and so close to that, that that is our one focus. And if anything outside of that is our focus, then it's literally serving other gods or self, small God, whatever. But the world's full of exploitations. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little aha moment for you. It was an aha moment. I don't know if there's a question in there or not. Is there a question? I don't know. So uh, I don't know if you want to expound on any of that and the connection versus being in that ego, which is exploitive, exploitative. I don't know how to say that word. Yeah, exploitative. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, you know, that word exploitation, it is a very strong word, actually. And, and sometimes I feel a little hesitant to, to use it because oh, I, I'm not saying it's the wrong word, necessarily, but I'm just saying that it can hit some people in a very heavy way, because they're not, <clears throat> they're not consciously living a life of exploitation correct and they they may even think of themselves as you know good altruistic you know pious people right so it's a it's kind of a heavy thing to <laughs> to hit people with isn't it well, that, that was me it was almost it put me on the defense a lot mm -hmm. I mean, not, not always on the defense but i'm just like and then i it hit me. We really, we really are, unless we're in that. I don't even know how to say it unless we're serving and offering ourselves into that Krishna consciousness. We're out serving ourselves or, you know, and, and I realized that one day I was in Salt Lake and I was like, I'm going to do this to serve, you know, I'm going to offer myself and I'm going to do this and, and help uh, raise money. And I came back like four or five hours later, I was completely exhausted. And I laughed to suit her basically saying, yeah, somewhere along leaving the temple, literally walking out the door and being so caught up with what I was doing 
as in supposed service, there was no bit of me connected to any type of consciousness other than serving myself and trying to find ways myself. So mm. it really smacked me. And then the other day it did. There's, I don't know. You can you can talk maybe on the function of us being so connected or driven and focused on that so that it's not exploitative for, I don't know. Wait, on what, sorry? So what's not exploitative? When we're, when, when we're, how to remain in that state. There you go. How do we remain in that state of consciousness where we're completely offering ourselves consi consistent, continuously as an offering to Krishna? Well, you know, one, one thing we have to remember always is that we do have a long road ahead of us. And it's not that we can, as much as we might wish for it, and much as, as much as we might like it, we cannot just snap our fingers <laughs> and, and expect that transformation to take place. You know, and and also if we try to be too, you know, it, it can actually if we're too forceful about it, it can become superficial or artificial. You know, we need to have. What I mean to say is, we need to really have clear awareness that we have a long road. You know, and and there are many layers of different types and degrees of exploiting tendencies that are going to come up within us in the course of our journey, if we are sincere. So we have to, you know, chalk out the long, you know, a long plan. You know, we have to recognize that. And we can't, you know, first of all, we don't even know what it really means to be fully Krishna conscious you know, at this stage. We don't know what, does that mean that we're always thinking about how Krishna plays the flute in Vrindavan? Or does that mean we're always thinking about how beautiful Krishna is and his, his you know, the luster of his, his dark blue, you know, you know, like, what is that? We don't know what it means, actually. Jai, Shlabhati, Pavan, Janardha, Maharaj, Ki Jai. How are you? Good, Maharaj, better for seeing you. <laughs> is this your weekly Zoom class? This is the uh, now Tuesday, it was Monday, it's turned to Tuesday now. Uh, <laughs> I'm always happy to see you. Happy to see you too, Maharaj. How, how are you? I heard that you had shingles. I still got it, but it, it just... I guess, you know, it doesn't really bother me that much. And it's going, it seems to be, it's going away, but. You still have it? It's, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, like two months. Wow, it lasts that long. Wow. Well, some people, some people say, you know, it just like lasts forever. So I don't know. Really? Like until you die. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. That's it doesn't really bother me that much. And it, and it, and it's really reduced. I went, was with Sanatani yesterday and she checked it out and it says, it's like, you know, almost gone. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So Did you, you, oh, go is, ahead, my is, is this Is this going out all over the world? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway. I suppose. I'm happy to see you. You know, that's that's the main part. I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm going to be there very soon, Maharaj, in your holy company. Oh, great. <laughs> in, about six, in about six weeks, I think I'll, I'll be there. That's nice. Happy. I heard that from Braja. That's really good news. Hmm. <laughs> Hi. My beauty is just open. Oh, I'm Bredja Mohini. I have um, Chintamani's put a note saying there are people waiting in the waiting yeah. room. Okay. 
some people waiting for what? To come in. I'm doing the admin on the Zoom call. Okay. Not much. <laughs> And the bad Maharaj. Do you want us we to you, you want us to go out? No. Oh, okay. We brought you a seat. What? No, I'll I'll be too shy to speak in front of Maharaj. Oh. <laughs> I, I think we're shifting locations. Hang on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Whoops, good Jai Jai Day Prabhu's joined us. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, we, we have to remember, you know, we're in kindergarten, you know. It's it's kind of like like think of it this way, like a like a five-year-old decides that they want to be a rocket scientist, right? <laughs> then you know they have to understand it's they have to go through a lot you know there's going to be a lot lot of study you know a lot of tests examinations you know, all kinds of hardships challenges all kinds of things they're going to have to go through you know you know they children they sometimes like to dress up right and pretend that they're a ballerina or a doctor or whatever right and and at that level of understanding they may really strongly identify with that and think that they're that but eventually they'll realize that's not the case and and to really achieve that in a real way they have to go through a lot of make a lot of sacrifice and learn a lot you know so in the same way and, and you know sometimes when we begin our spiritual life i mean not sometimes we could say often if not usually you know, we, we tend to dive in in the beginning thinking it's going to be that, that simple. You know? A few of the senior devotees in our mission who originally came from ISKCON, they, they told me that because Srila Sai Maharaj Prabhupada, he was so encouraging and in some ways he kept, he kept things simple, you know, on some level. And so there were a few, it was a, a few, a few devotees told me that that their impression, hearing from Srila Swami Maharaj Prabhupada being in his mission, they, they, they had this impression that they were going to be, you know, in Goloka Vrindavan <laughs> within 10, 20 years. You know, when one, Kaila, are you raising your hand? Oh, you want to say something, Kaila? <clears throat> I think when you finish, then she'll say something. I must say okay. something. Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah, so one of these devotees, they, I won't say their names in case they're embarrassed, but one of them told me that they thought they would have, they would have attained Krishna Prema, you know, within a few years. And another one told me that he thought he'd be a cowherd boy. <laughs> he'd be a cowherd boy in Goloka Vrindavan you know, within the next 10 or 20 years, you know, that was the kind of idea that they had. And then, you know, after some years down the line, facing different challenges, and they realized, you know, it's not going to be so easy, you know. And, 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 you know, generally, you know, many, if not most of us, as I said, you know, we, you know, I myself, I, I dived in, I remember when I first went to live in India, and I was, you know, super gung-ho, you know, and, and I think a little arrogant in some ways, you know, thinking that, you know, I'm doing so much and I'm better than so many other people, you know, and, and it's just all about, you know, service, 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 go, go, go. You know, I, I remember I had that kind of mentality when I first became, you know, really inspired for my spiritual life. And, and then eventually after some years, I realized, you know, this is a long road, you know, it's, it's a long road. It's mentioned also in one, it's given maybe by Bhakti Vinod talk or maybe Vishwanath Chakravarti, I can't remember, but it's an outline of different stages of um, like obstacles that we will face or different um, weaknesses that we have on the path. And the first one, 
And Shula Gurudev, Shula Govindamar, used to quote this sometimes. And the first one on that list, it's, it's false enthusiasm. <laughs> false enthusiasm. So that tendency is there, you know. But when we're a little more mature, then we will start to feel like, I don't even know what Krishna consciousness is. You know, I, have, I have no idea what it is. You know, <clears throat> what does it actually mean to be Krishna conscious? You know? So it's not like we can just, as I said, snap our fingers or turn on the light switch and, <clears throat> and we're going to be Krishna conscious immediately. You know? so, so what can we, you know, what can we do but go on, go on with the practices, you know, go on hearing. And, and an important thing to remember Maybe this is the real answer to your question, if it was a question, is that it's dependent upon grace. You know, we are dependent upon grace. Our progress, our movement towards becoming Krishna conscious, it will, it will take place according to the degree of mercy that we have received. You know? It's a, it's a descending process, not an ascending pro process. It's not that, you know, we're going to decide, okay, that's it. That's it, Vishak. I'm going to be like fully Krishna conscious from tomorrow. You know, and nobody's going to stop me. You know, like I'm going to the gym and I'm going to build up my muscles and lose lots of weight or whatever, right? It's, it's not like that, no. But we're trying to, posture ourselves so that we can better we can better attract the flow of divine mercy i think that's the proper the proper way to you know to approach this i mean i think that's the proper i think that's the main point for us to remember in this discussion and and it's you know it's it sounds simple but actually it's it's very difficult to remember. It's something that I repeatedly have to remind myself. You know, that it, it always comes, whatever struggle we're facing, it always comes back to that. You know, that we are dependent on the higher will. You know, we are dependent on the higher will. You know. Today I was going through a very difficult time with one one devotee is just I, I think some of you are familiar with the the story of Ramachandra Puri in Chaitanya Charitamrita who always he's always criticizing Mahaprabhu and the devotees and you know like like he sees some ants crawling nearby Mahaprabhu so he tells Mahaprabhu oh you you must be eating a lot of sweets otherwise why would these Ants be here. What kind of a sannyasi are you? <laughs> and then, and then, then, so then Mahaprabhu cuts his eating. I, I like to half or maybe less than half, and all the devotees are crying and crying. And, and but he does it to satisfy that this Ramachandra Puri. So then Mahaprabhu loses a lot of weight and he's not eating. And, and then that, and then this Ramachandra Puri criticizes Mahaprabhu again and says, Oh, this is false renunciation. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what what are you doing you know so he's you know Ramachandra Puri that is his nature he he's just he's in that mode of criticizing you know but anyway I, I've been dealing with somebody like like this and trying to resolve things with them and and I and you know it's it's very difficult for me because I I like to be harmonious with everyone you know and I I like to no doubt a part's a part of my ego but I've been struggling, like, how can I fix this situation? And then it just hit me this evening, you know, like, you have to surrender this to Gurudev as well. You know? <laughs> Maybe this isn't supposed to be fixed, you know? And if it is, it shouldn't be, you know, about me, you know, about me, you know, harmonizing or being this amazing person who can get along with everyone, you know, it shouldn't be about, that's not the story. You know, but the story, the real story is I am an instrument of my Guru Day. I'm an instrument of Guru and Garanga. You know, I'm not here to, to, you know, please everybody's ego. 
but how can I be a perfect servant of the higher Vaishnavas, of my Gurudev, of Mahaprabhu? You know, that's, that's the real question. You know, so I, I prayed to Gurudev, Gurudev, this is in your hands. You know, I've done the best that I can do and now it's up to you, you know. And finally some, some peace came to my heart, you know. So, at, you know, at every, at every stage of our, and every, at every stage and in every aspect of our practicing life, you know, we want that, that movement to be there, you know, that mentality to be there, you know, that it's a descending process. We are descend, we are dependent, you know, we are wholly dependent on higher grace, you know, so how can we, how can we please them? You know, how can we be a better recipient of their flow of mercy? You know, that is the question. And when they want, you know, they can make us fully Krishna conscious. You know, Nityananda Prabhu, you know, he can snap his fingers <laughs> and tell, you know, Maya Devi to, to leave us, you know, to remove that, that veil of illusion. You know? He has that power. So we have to remember that. Uh, Kaila, now you want to say something? <laughs> hey, now your turn. She, her, her um, question is, if you can please tell us something about Srimati Radharani. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Gosh, well... <laughs> That's a big question, Kyla. <laughs> well, before I go to that, um, Echo, are, are you happy with that? Or do you want to add anything to that or comment on that? I'm just going to keep my comment very short. So I, I think you summed it up perfectly uh, because I was going to say, mm, I'm just going to go to heart, but surrender, or my favorite words, again, since Salt Lake is serenography because I understand the word surrender and intention. And if our tension is always to be, oh, that's another one that just hit me. Um, what was the word she used to go down? To, go, to know that descend. descend lower and lower to our ego and surrender to our guru or Krishna's flow <laughs> brace and flow very nice beautiful echo <laughs> now we can hear oh. that from that. okay so so kyla she she she's asking to hear something about shimati vatarani uh, well what can i say you know i it is a very high topic and I don't feel qualified <laughs> to say anything, you know. But what what we can say is that you know this is one way in which you know we we feel shy actually. We are we are unqualified and we feel shy to to say anything about her, you know, because she is such a such a great personality, you know? and we don't have the capacity actually to properly understand her position. But one way in which, you know, Shula, our, our Guru Dev, one way in which he approached this once is he, in, in, in a, like a careful way through which we can understand her position is, is by, by, you know, observing, you know, Krishna, who is Krishna? You know, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and Krishna, what does Krishna mean? You know, Krishna refers to his power of attraction. Krishna is derived from akarshan, which means attraction. So Krishna is supremely attractive. And, and so he is so attractive. He is so beautiful that even Cupid, you know, Cupid, he is the, he is known as the angel who can capture people's hearts in this world <laughs> he, he will he can shoot his arrow at you and you will be lost you know and 
so it is mentioned that Krishna is so beautiful and attractive and charming that he can attract even Cupid. Cupid attracts the whole world. Krishna can attract Cupid. And then what is the position of Srimati Radharani? That she can attract even Krishna. No. That is her position. No. Krishna, who attracts the person, who attracts the whole world, you know, he is attracted by Radharani. Not only attracted, but he is bewildered. He, he comes under her control. You know. So what, what kind of position does she have? You know? And, and we can also say that, that she, she ultimately, you know, her service is ultimately the goal of our line. You know? We don't talk about it so much because it is something that is far above our head right now. But our gurus have told us that, you know, now we, we speak more about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, and also Krishna. You know, we don't talk so much about Radharani. You know? But we know that that is the ultimate destination of this line. You know, that is where our gurus want to take us. And that is where they, that is where they are living. That is where their whole aspiration is, you know. Radha Dasyam, it is called to be a, you know, the, the service of Srimati Radharani. You know, that is considered to be the highest attainment. And we heard one story from Srila Sridhar Maharaj, who is our grandfather guru, that one time um, his guru, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, he was in, in Govardhan. And in Govardhan, there is this very special lake Maybe you've heard about it called Radha Kund. And Radha Kund is considered to be one form of Radharani in the, in the form of water. It is her, an extension of herself. And so it is a very, very sacred place. And so one time there was one local king and his family. They were going around this Kund, this lake. And in doing what is called Dandavat Parikrama. Dandavat Parikrama means, I don't know if you've seen before, but it means when you are, you are doing Parikrama, you're doing circumambulation of a holy place, but you do by giving full Dandavat. So you stretch out your whole body on the ground, and then you mark that spot, the tips of your fingers with the stone or something, and you stand up at that point, then you stretch out again, full dandavat again. Then you stand up again at that point and like that. So it is a, it is, it is a very, you know, it is a somewhat austere, you know, way of offering respect. It is a, you know, deep expression of honor. So this king and his family, you know, they were doing this dandavat prikrama around Radha Kund, you know, showing great respect, great reverence for Srimati Radharani. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who is, you know, our great grandfather, guru, guardian, you know, he was standing nearby. And then one of his disciples saw that and he became very excited and he said, Oh, look, you know, look, Prabhupada, you know, they, they're giving so much respect to Radharani, you know, and just like, like we are honoring Radharani so much, they are also honoring Radharani so much. You know? And and then Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, he said, he said, yes, they're giving her great honor, but their standpoint is very different from ours. You know, their their mentality is very different from ours. You know, they are actually worshiping Krishna. And they are thinking, oh, Radharani is very dear to Krishna. It's very beloved to Krishna. So we are also worshiping Radharani. And Prabhupada Sarasri Thakur said, but our, our position is just the opposite. You know, we are, our concern is actually with Radharani. We are worshiping Radharani. And because Krishna is very dear to her, then we are also worshiping Krishna. <laughs> so that is the... That is the ideal, you know, that is the, 
that is the aspiration, that is the bhajan life, the service life of our gurus and of this line. You know, they are, they are ultimately wholesale concerned with, with her divine service. And Radharani, she is the embodiment of sacrifice. You know, if we really want to understand what, is, what does it really mean you know, to enter Vrindavan, you know, what does it really mean to approach Radharani in a genuine way? You know, not like in a storybook, but in a real life way. <laughs> what does it mean to really understand or come close in some remote way to who Radharani is or what is the nature of their divine land, Vrindavan? Then this is the key point, sacrifice. What does sacrifice mean? Sacrifice means giving ourselves. It means forgetting our own desires and our own needs because we are thinking of the desires of the higher you know, souls, of the higher plane. You know? Guru, Garanga, Radharani, Krishna, Vaishnava, that we are so absorbed in trying to please them that we are forgetting ourselves. <laughs> we are giving so much of, we're giving all of our energy to try to make them happy that we are forgetting about ourselves. You know, that, is, that is what sacrifice means. And that is what real Krishna consciousness is. And that's what it means to approach Radharani actually. <laughs> To come, to come within the atmosphere of that higher plane. It is built on that. You know, it is built on that consciousness that everyone is giving. Every, every sense of their being, they're giving you know, for the higher cause. You know, nobody's thinking about themselves. And this world... You know, Kyla, maybe you see at school, you know, so maybe sometimes you are sad to see at school how so many people, they're only thinking about themselves, right? I'm sure you see that sometimes. People are fighting because they want to be the best in the class or they want the best toy or they want the best food or, or whatever it may be, you know. They want to impress the teacher the best, you know. They want to be the most popular and have the most friends and they want to have the best toys or phone or whatever you know that's what this world is like you know to a very large extent so it is it is very sad to see that you know but Vrindavan is just the opposite you know as and this in this world we are thinking about ourselves so much but in Vrindavan everyone is thinking about everyone else <laughs> everyone is thinking how can we make Krishna happy? How can we make Radharani happy? How can we make the other devotees happy? You know, and because everyone is taking care of each other so nicely, then everything is, everyone is taken care of. You, no one needs to think about themselves. <laughs> Everyone's thinking about each other so beautifully. Then nobody has to think about themselves. You know? But in this world, everyone's forgetting about everyone else. And everyone has to fight to get for themselves. It is a very sad thing. So we don't want to be like that. You know? We want to try to follow that example of the residents of Vrindavan. You know? We want to try to live a life of giving. We want to try to give a life, live a life of sacrifice and service and love. You know? That is real life, actually. Our, our Guru Dave, he, he said, you know, live, we want to have a living life. We want to live a living life, not a dead life. <laughs> Many people in this world, they're living a dead life. You know, they're only thinking about their body, you know, thinking about their clothes, thinking about their food, thinking about their bank balance, how much money they have, thinking about music or what, what things they can see or taste or smell. Hi, Swarnangi Didi, Dandavad. Nice to see you. Looking Very forward to seeing you soon. You 
Oh, I'm really excited to see you too, Dee Dee. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for popping in. Jai Shri Shri Guru Garanga Dandari Kikiri Hari Chu. Jai Sarnangi Dee Dee. Jai. Who was I saying now? Oh, yeah. So, you know, we don't want to live like that. You know, these are all these things. They're all on the surface. You know, everything that is pertaining to our body. These are all superficial. This body will become old. You know, maybe you see in like in the grownups like me, right? Where we get wrinkles and <laughs> we get health problems and <laughs> And maybe you see that sometimes. You know? <laughs> so that will happen to you too. You know? and, and this body one day it will just stop working. You know? But inside of this body is the soul. You know? And the soul does not die. So we have to think about that. You know? Just like how we eat food to make our stomach happy and to give strength to our body. That would be nice, huh? So we also have to give some food for the soul. We have to think about the soul because this body is not forever, but the soul is forever. So we have to think about that. You know, what, what kind of food does the soul want? You know, what kind of food does the soul need? You know, we have to think about that. And actually that mood, that spirit of giving, of sacrifice, of service, that is food for the soul. And you're asking about Srimati Radharani, that is how we can come closer to her, you know, by trying to live our life in that kind of spirit, you know, then we will come closer to her and her divine service group. <laughs> and we're, we're happy to see your inspiration at such a young age, you're very interested in Krishna consciousness, you like it, and you like to join your mother <laughs> in the classes. <laughs> Maybe sometimes you don't understand some of the words, but still you like to listen. So that's a very nice quality. <laughs> Even if you don't always understand with your brain, you know, something will touch your heart. You know, you will feel that it will make your life brighter. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kyla's smiling. <laughs> well, we've had a few others join the group. Rasvaraj Prabhu has joined us, and Bhakta Kori's joined us, and also Nahush <laughs> Dandavat Prabhu. <laughs> Anyone else have any comments or topics or anything at all? <laughs> oh Nahush, you're raising your hand. I was thinking, you know, maybe I'm maybe I, I missed one of your your questions. I'm trying to think. <laughs> Please go ahead. Hi Krishna, um, um, dear Didi, thank you so much. I wanted to ask um, about the Shashaskim prayers and, um, just, you know, the amongst devotees, I heard the comment that Shashaskim prayers are like the mood of Srimati Radharani or the heart of Srimati Radharani. I wanted to know if, if, if that was more of, of a sentiment or is it true or, and, um, and yeah, if you wanted to, just that was my only question. I don't know if you wanted to elaborate more. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, you're, you're correct. You know, what you heard is correct because, you know, who is Mahaprabhu? You know, Radha Bhava Duti Suvalitam Nomi Krishna Surupam, right? You know, Mahaprabhu is Krishna enhanced, you know, by the heart and halo of Srimati Radharani. And so, yes, though those prayers of the Shikshashtakam, they, they are coming from the heart of Radharani, you know, in the last period of Mahaprabhu's pastimes in this world, when he's entering that mood of separation that Srimati Radharani, you know, experiences, that is, that is when those prayers 
come out, you know, and and that mood reaches its zenith point, reaches its acme in the last verse of the Shikshashtakam, you know, Ashlishiva Paratam Pinashtu Mam Nadarshana Marmhatam Kurotuva, this verse, which you know, speaking of sacrifice, it is the ultimate expression of sacrifice, you know, that, oh, Krishna, you can do with me as you like, you know, you can embrace me, you can trample upon me, you can be indifferent to me, but, you know, you will only, you will always be, you know, prananat, the only Lord of my life, you know, it is the ultimate expression of surrender and sacrifice. So yes, that is the, that is coming from the heart, it is a, representing the heart, the mood of Srimati Radharani, that is, that is correct. And, you know, I, I'm saying it like it's, you know, just a statement of fact, but, but actually it's something that just struck me very recently also. I think it was just a few months ago. Actually, we were going, we had a, we, we had a series of class, when I was in Texas, actually, in um, October, we did a series of classes going through the Shikshashtakam and and um, and that's when it I think it really hit me for the first time, like, wow, this is actually, you know, the hard expression of Srimati Radharani. You know, it is it is extraordinary. <laughs> so yes. The Shikshashtakam prayers, they're so valuable, you know. Our Guru Dev Srila Govinda Maharaj, you know, he expressed that, you know, everything is within there actually, you know, beginning, middle and end, you know, and centering around the significance of the holy name, you know, how, how, you know, how we will chant, you know, what, with what type of, with what type of mood should we try to chant, you know, what are the different stages of consciousness we will move through in the course of our chanting, and ultimately that, you know, the highest, the highest mood of sacrifice and surrender, you know. So they are very, very valuable for us. <laughs> if i may say one more thing please. yeah please um i was remembering how um the past time of govardhan hill is like the manifestation of krishna's love for shrimati radharani and then how uh, on, on govardhan hill we have um, wait sorry can you say that again yeah i was from i i don't know i I think I remember like Govardhan Hill like actually manifests in, in uh, the spiritual world um, out of Krishna's love for Shrimad Radharani. Um, I don't know 100% if that's true, but um, but I, I was remembering how like on Govardhan Hills are different like um, gradations of bhakti in, and on the highest platform and how Shrimad Radharani is um, services at the highest I, I don't know I'm just having these uh, memories I just wanted to share that I'm sorry actually I didn't quite follow you there oh yeah I I don't know I'm just saying like how I was remembering how over that hill was a manifestation of Krishna's love for Srimadhi Radharani and then how on Govardhan Hills there's different gradations of um, intensity of, of bhakti and then the highest being that of uh, Srimadhi Radharani. Okay. Um, I mean, what comes to my mind is um, the Upadeshamrita, you know, which, which is describing the gradation within the spiritual sky and and uh, Govardhan is described as the as the you know, 
Radha Kund is described as the highest place, you know, and then just before Radha Kund is, is Govardhan, you know. And, and it, yes, it is described, especially we know of the writings of Raghunath Das Goswami. He has very special affinity for Govardhan and Radha Kund, and he describes how, you know, many intimate pastimes you know, Radha, Krishna, Leela, they take place there and Govardhan. You know. We also hear that, you know, actually, you know, we, our gurus and Mahaprabhu, they have guided us to, to see Govardhan and worship Govardhan as, as a form of Krishna, you know. But, but Govardhan actually has another identity also as a servitor of Krishna. And... And so you'll find prayer. There are some prayers. You know, there's one famous prayer you reminded me of in particular expressed by the Braja Gopis where they are honoring and celebrating Govardhan as the greatest servitor of Krishna. She Hari Das Avaryo. There's an expression that, you know, and they describe how, you know, with every element on Govardhan, you know, he is serving Krishna, you know, the soft grasses and the sweet waters and the hidden caves and the fruits and so on and so forth, you know, with every, every inch <laughs> of his existence, you know, his whole life is an offering, a service for the satisfaction of, of Shishi Radha Krishna. So there is also that angle of vision but but we are focusing on the vision of him as an extension of, of Krishna and worshiping him in that way. You know? And you know, Govardhan, Govardhan is it is the you know the thinking of our gurus is that Radha Kund is the highest place. And we we don't want to rush to the high, we won't think that we're qualified to approach the highest place, you know? And so the thinking of our gurus is that we shall aspire for residence in Govardhan, you know? And this has been expressed by Raghunath Das Goswami, by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, by our, our guru and our Param guru, you know, that was their heart feeling, you know? And then there's one prayer, Raghunath, this is the refrain. She Govardhana Vas Partana Dashakam. You know, these prayers, praying for residence in Govardhan. And each verse concludes with this line. Nija Nikata Niva Sam Dehi Govardhan. Oh Govardhan, please mercifully give me residence close to you. Please give me shelter, you know, in your care. And so that is their thinking, you know, that Radha Kund is the place for our gurus. You know, Radha, Radha Kund is the place of, um, you know, the most intimate, exclusive pastimes of Shishi Radha Krishna. <clears throat> so we will not have such audacity to think that we can enter there. But we will stay one step below in Govardhan. And, and we've heard our gurus describe, you know, that that vision, you know, that, you know, we shall stay in Govardhan, we will arise early in the morning, we will go to, to, to serve our gurus at Radha Kund. And then when the day is over, we've completed our service, we will come back to rest at, in Govardhan, you know, then the next morning we will go again, you know, but always coming back to the safe position, one step below, you know, that is the, that is always the, the feeling of a genuine person on this path, you know, in this line. <laughs> wow, we've gone to very high topics today. <laughs> Anyone else want to add anything or? Ask anything else? <laughs> and our Gurudev, he 
constructed, you know, that guest house in Govardhan, you know, in in honor of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur's specific desire to spend his final days in, in Govardhan. You know, you know, some of I'm sure some of you have heard it is a famous story how in his in the last period of his life, Srila Sarasati Thakur, he expressed that he wanted to spend his last days in Radha, sorry, in Govardhan. And he also requested one of his disciples to arrange a residence for him there. But in the end, he left the world before that took place. And, but, but around the same time that he was leaving the world, which was in Calcutta, then this disciple of his in Govardhan, Balaram was his name, Balaram Panda. He had a he had a vision, you know, like a dream. It was in the early hours of the morning, and he had this dream vision of Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur coming to him and told him, I have come, you know, Balaram, I have come. And, and Balaram awoke and, and he was, it, the dream was so vivid, you know, he thought this wasn't just some ordinary dream. And, and so he went and sent a telegram to the devotees in Calcutta asking, you know, how is Prabhupada's condition? And, um, and they told him, they responded, oh, he's just left the world, you know? And he was astonished, you know? So he, you know, he left like that, you know, with that statement, I'm, I'm, you know, I've come to Govardhan, you know? And so our Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj, he, you know, in, in recognition and service to that, he built this guest house for the devotees, but he named it Sri Daita Das Seva Kund. You know, Daita Das is the internal name of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. You know, so the place of service of, you know, Sri Daita Das, you know, that is the, the very, very special. And you know, every, all of the names, even even Gurudev mentioned himself how his the names he gave were always perfect, <laughs> and he said because Guru Maharaj is giving me the inspiration, you know, so that name he gave is so so on point, you know, and and I I heard even that 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 Gurudev he he actually kept the name a secret until the last moment because because he was afraid that if he mentioned the name, then many other people would copy him. <laughs> In other temples, they would copy him because it is so perfect. You know? <laughs> so he mentioned, I, while the construction was going on, I've chosen the name, but I won't say now, you know. Shri Daita Da Seva Kunj. All right. Well, to be wrap wrap things up. Any final words from anyone? <laughs>